How's it going, Jets fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Ryan Moran. Joining Fireside Giants today, wanted to react to an interesting video from Carl Lawson absolutely demolishing in a practice setting. And obviously, you know, shorts, no pads, um, not a lot to take away from it, but it did display some of that very, very good power he has and contains that will ultimately translate to the defensive side and hopefully give this Jets team a nice pass rush boost and also just help set the edge in the running game. So uh, there's a lot to like with Carl Lawson. We'll kind of talk about him, react to the video, and then we want to talk about Jeremy Ruckert's injury. He's been dealing with a foot issue since the Senior Bowl. Um, you know, definitely a little thing to be aware of and that we will discuss and maybe kind of, you know, break down how it will impact the tight ends room. But Ryan, before we dive into the good stuff, how do you today, my friend? I'm doing good, Alex, with Carl Lawson. I think one thing you knew when the Jets signed him was just this guy's work ethic and it was never going to stop. It was never going to change when he got the big contract. And I think there was a reason Jet fans were so optimistic even after the injury last year. And it was because you knew this guy was going to be relentless in this pursuit coming back and, you know, excited to look at that video. I, I think some people have definitely seen it. It's gone a bit viral. So, you know, that'll definitely be good. And, you know, with Ruckert, I think the main takeaway is it's a good thing that the Jets have depth at tight end now, you know, with Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzama, you know, you have that luxury of really just kind of easing him in. You don't really feel any edit pressure for Zach going into this crucial second year where he needs all the talent around him possible. And, you know, having Conklin and Uzama, I think, like I said, just gives the Jets a little bit of, you know, breathing room there with, you know, Ruckert. And, you know, just hope that with more time uh, he's, you know, healing and hopefully ready to go at some point early on in training camp. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about Carl Lawson first before we dive into this video of him. Um, Lawson, six foot two, six, 265 pounds, coming off um, that significant injury. And, you know, he's coming back, looks pretty solid, had a, let's see, five and a half sacks in 2020, the last time he played um, in 16 games. So he's played 16 games twice in his career. Um, back in 2017, as a rookie, had a career high 8.5 sacks, but was much better at tackling in 2020 with uh, 36 combined tackles, 32 quarterback hits, and four tackles for a loss. So he had some pretty good success getting to the quarterback. The sack numbers weren't there, but it's an overrated stat to begin with. I like to see quarterback hits, hurries a little bit more, gives you an idea of how much influence and impact he's having on opposing quarterbacks. And he looks like he's back to his normal self, right? This clip is is pretty nice to see. Like he is powerful. When he gets his hands on you, he's going to push you back. Very good bull rush. Has a good rip. Can uh, get hit that lower center of gravity around the edge and uh, skirt around. So um, he's got what it takes to be that premier edge rush presence for the Jets. Of course, you add Jermaine Johnson to the mix now, who can help as a run to defender immediately, but is a little bit raw in his pass rush. A little bit older for a rookie at twenty four but I do think he's going to make a pretty nice impact for this team. What do you think Carl Lawson's impact is? Do you think he's like top gun immediately? Do you think they ease him into the season? You know, just take it easier. I think like once he's ready to go, like they're hundred percent going to him for sure. So it's funny. I think with Carl, he's really the primary pass rusher out of the edge group. And with JJ, I think you're looking at the primary run defender, you know, on the edge, setting a physical hard edge, using that size and length that he has JJ from a height and length uh, standpoint is a little bit different from the rest of this group. You know, Carl is very unique. He's under 6'2". He, he doesn't have long arms by any means, but you spoke on the 260-plus pound frame, and that's really with that low build to the ground, he's able to generate some power with that long arm at the point of attack. And J.J., obviously, he, you know, he's over 6'4", 34-inch arm length, so he, he's the bit more physical guy. You know, when you talk about Bryce Huff, Jacob Martin, Vinny Curry, you know, maybe not as big and physical as, as you know, a run defender, so – to me, I, I think they're the best two players from the bunch on edge at the edge by far. Um, but they really kind of complement each other. And I think that their roles and what will be expected from them this season is different with JJ against the run and Carl against the quarter. Yeah, getting after the quarterback. Absolutely. So let's take a look at this video here. Let's check out Carl Lawson. All right. Let's rewind it. We'll watch it a couple times so you can see. Off that rush. I mean, whoo. That initial impact that he has, that initial power, I mean, look at him. He's freaking ripped to begin with. But he's a small, he's a shorter guy. Like, he's not a taller guy. I mean, he has got to pick this man's up. He's. I mean, look at that. That guy's like, holy hell, that that just absolutely bulldozed. Um, you see that get off? I mean, that knee looks like it's back to full health. You know what I mean? Or was it Achilles? What was it again? It was an Achilles. And he had Achilles, it in right? August, so he, he's almost had 12 months. Right. I mean, look at guys like Cam Akers. It took him six months to get back from Achilles injury, maybe even less than that, a couple, maybe four. So it's, it seems like he's ready to go. He missed the whole 2021 season. He's going to be fully healthy. That jump, that get off, looks where it used to be. 
these guys are coming back. I mean, look at that. Look at his arm strength. I mean, you're talking, I mean, that guy has to be like 300 pounds, right? He just absolutely shrugged him off. Like, I mean, he pushed, pushed his <laughs> right in the chest, pushed his ass to the ground. I mean, look, this, I don't know who this guy is. Um, could be an absolute nobody for all I know, but it's still a 300 pound human being that he just pushed to the ground. Like he just bench pressed him off of him. And that's what you want to see, right? That this is what you want to see from your star premier edge rusher. And then he's a good, he's a good dude, picks him back up and says, you know, let's keep going. Uh, so what's your, what's your impression of this and just showcasing some of that power? For sure. So like you said, the initial get off and you know how fast Carl is with this first step. He's a speed, the power guy with a variety of moves in his arsenal as well. And I think the main thing you see there, and it's really cool to see it up close and in person, you know, in more of a workout setting than on the field, like why he's able to generate so much power there. His two hands are placed perfectly. If you take a close look at it right uh, at the point right there, you know, where they're right inside that tackle shoulders and he creates that initial knockback there. Yeah, I mean, he's also like sweaty, so that guy's hands just he's slipping right off of him. Uh, but you got pads there, maybe a little bit more difficult to hold on. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, just that initial impact right there. I mean, this is a this is a winning rep, right? He's got his he's got his, his hands inside. He's beaten this, his man, um, and then he just extends and bam to the ground. I mean, uh, better offensive tackles are not going to let this happen, and they're going to be able to recover a lot more. They'll just reset and and you know push back. Uh, this guy gets his ass absolutely kicked, and I hope to God he's not looking to make an NFL team because he will not be making an NFL team with that type of technique anytime soon. Um, but pretty good job there. Uh, really nice to see Carl Lawson back at it, uh, making some good plays, showcasing that strength, that speed, that get up. Uh, so it's awesome. Really, really excited to see you know what he can do this upcoming season. Now let's let's take a look at Jeremy Ruckert for a second, talk about him um, and this injury here. So what do you know about this Jeremy, Jeremy Ruckert injury? Uh, you know, just give me give me a little breakdown about what your expectations are from him in terms of like, is he going to do you think he's going to miss some training camp days or something? For sure. So obviously he had a good like first day or two at the senior bowl back in late January, early February. And he wasn't able to play in that game in the game that week because of a foot injury. And there really hasn't been a ton of information shared on like what exactly the foot injury is, you know, how bad it is. We do know that since the Jets drafted him, he really did not do a lot of work this spring. You know, the OTA mini camp period carried into, you know, the early summer in June. I mean, he was very limited, did not get a lot of work in. You know, at this point in time, obviously the Jets did report the rookies yesterday. So transactions obviously started to go through uh, the league wire. And it was obviously reported by a couple of people yesterday afternoon that Jeremy Ruckert was placed on the non-football injury list. And you know, it doesn't impact at this point in time his regular season availability. Obviously, that's the big thing you want is to just have everyone is ready to go and have as much depth as possible for week one. But to me, it's definitely significant for him to get those reps in this training camp to get some experience under his belt, like with, with any rookie, you know. And, you know, hopefully the training camp and the preseason action is able to really get him up to speed. And, you know, he's able to really provide that great depth to start the season there behind Tyler Conklin and C.J. Uzama. But I think with the starting offense and obviously Zach Wilson being the focal point, look, at the end of the day, he is the third guy behind Conklin and Uzama. So in that sense, there's not too much to worry about, I would say, at this point in time. But you definitely hope that he's able to continue to recover here, you know, with more time. And hopefully early on in camp, he's able to, you know, get out there on the field. Yeah, look, I'm a huge Jeremy Rucker fan. You know, the fact that he's a big Jets fan makes it even better for uh, the community here. And just, you know, knowing that he obviously wants to be a great player and grew up as a Jets fan. That's pretty cool. Um, and just give you guys some insight. Um, during his last season with Ohio State, finished with 309 yards, three touchdowns. Um, he's a legitimate blocker. Like, he can actually get into the trenches and make some stuff happen. So that's a really nice sign uh, as the Jets kind of continue to develop him here. Six foot six, 251 pounds. He's a big guy. Probably will add a little bit more muscle mass as we go with the NFL uh, kind of diet and nutritional plan. So pretty awesome player to develop behind Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzuma. Like, that's pretty insane to me. Like, they have a really, really impressive room um, of tight ends now, which is crazy. Uh, really, you know, willing blocker, really physical. He's average route running. His speed is a little bit underwhelming, but the guy does not drop passes. Uh, his above average hand size at 10 inches and 13, I guess, centimeters, um, 77th percentile. He was a plug and play inline blocker, but the fact of the matter is the Jets have him kind of developing behind the scenes. And that's going to make him even better when they continue to, when they start to actually rely on him. Like Conklin is on, what was his contract again? I forget exactly. And him and Uzama both got three years. Interesting. So it's going to be tough for, for uh, Rucker to break that to break that starting 
double duo right there. But if there's any injuries, he's an instant play. Like he's instantly going to make an impact, I think. And of course, like over three years, every player misses a game or two every now and then. So having a guy like that developing and, you know, after the three years is over, you have a pretty solid player there that you can really inject into a starting role. Maybe he even beats out one of those guys for a starting role. He's a really underrated pass catcher. I think he's going to be a pretty talented player and productive one at the NFL level if given the opportunity. Hopefully the Jets can uh, offer him that at some point. Uh, but guys, I'd love to hear a perspective below in the YouTube comments about Carl Lawson, his growth, the viral video we watched before, and Jeremy Rucker, you know, coming back from this foot injury. Clearly it's still bothering him a little bit. Uh, but it seems like they're also being just precautionary, making sure that he's ready to go. There's no reason to put him in a spot, especially if he's in a developmental stage where he's behind Conklin and Uzoma. No reason to put him in a spot where he can re-aggravate that injury. Take it easy. Take it slow. Make sure he knows the offense and then get himself some reps during maybe preseason or something like that or just you know continue with practice and see what happens. But solid player there. Excited to see his growth. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. 